lineup. Christmas time? How'd you know? <laughs> Couldn't miss it. Oh, it's not that bad. I kind of like it. Wife give it to you? Kid. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Got somebody in the line? Uh-uh. I thought I'd say I'll cargo him, making out. How many do you have? Fifteen. Glad to see cargo get the chance. Been with you a long time. Yeah, twelve years now. You really think my tie's loud? Hmm? May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Carter, Sergeant Pete Carter. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. If you are sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They are seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identification. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the washroom and dressed back in their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. All right, keep it moving. Right over here to the end of the stage. Now turn and face front. Hands at your side. Now when I call your number, step out and talk up. It's a big room out there and I want everybody to hear you. All right, number one, Louis Briskin. Drunk and disorderly. Where do you live, Louis? 1608, You'll have to speak up, Louis. I got a talk, though. You can talk up louder than that. Repeat your address. 160847. Where do you work? I got in a poultry shop. My own business. You caused a little trouble in your upholstery shop, Louis. Yeah. You beat up a customer. He got nasty. You beat up everybody that gets nasty? He's after five, the shop was closed. You always close at five? I close when I feel like it. I own the shop, I close when I want to close. I close. Had a couple of drinks, and this guy comes in to get his lousy love seat. Why did he get nasty? He said I put the wrong fabric on it or something. I say he's crazy. He says he ordered something else. I say he didn't. You know how those things get started. What did you hit him with? The love seat. <laughs> All right, Louis, step back. You know, the fabric he said he didn't order was better than the stuff he said he did. Step back, Louis. Okay. Number two, John Spatz. Robbery. What do you live, John? Uh, 67 West, 157th Street. What do you do? I shine shoes and it's stand. How old are you? Anybody arrested with you? Yeah. Fellow back there, action. Uh, number seven, William Carpenter. Well, I don't know. I just told me Bill. I only met him yesterday. Any weapons? Yeah. Well, what were they? Uh, two guns. Yeah. Pistols, rifles, shotguns. Okay. Mine was a thirty-eight. Oh, come on now, John. Give us the whole description. Well, mine was a thirty-eight. Blue steel thirty-eight. Mendel Park, eh? Yeah, 670 East Reeves. man called named Bellows. Said his sister was a victim. Well, how bad is she? Said she was dead. Very small. Hello, Coyne. Hi, Ben. Yeah, uh, what are you looking for? Patrick. Shot her through the window. Thought I might find it out here. Who's inside? The brother and Crockett. All right, keep looking. I will. Uh, hello, Vance. She died instantly. Bullet entered behind the left ear. Uh, where's the brother? The other room. Now, take a look around, Coin. Right. Brother's really taking a tough Uh-huh. Lieutenant Guthrie. Oh, yes. Hello. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you think you can answer them right now. Well, I 
guess I can end up kind of numb, kind of stunned. One minute you talk to somebody you know, and, and that's the end of it. That's all. I, I, I just, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm so mixed up. I, well, you can help by just telling us everything you know, everything you can remember. I don't know. I, I was just sitting there reading the paper. Marge was out in the kitchen. She was, you know, one of those silly things, Marge and her girlfriend or something like I think they were shopping and something happened, you know, with the clerk. So it reminded me of a story, I guess. I I said something that was funny. We laughed. Kind of silly because we were tired. You know how you do. Yeah. She's got a real... What were you going to say? I was going to say she's got a real wonderful laugh. But... I'm sorry. Take your time. You got a cigarette with him? Well, sure. Thanks. There's one. Thanks. Thanks. I... What was I talking about? Uh, your sister was in the kitchen. Oh, yes. You were laughing about something. Yes, well, she came into the room and sat down. I guess we laughed some more and started to talk. There was a shot. Not a loud one. I, I remember I didn't pay any attention to Marge. The window broke and it made me jump. I didn't look at her. I think I jumped up. Yeah. And I said something. I, I don't remember just what I said, but I turned to Marge. She was falling over. It happened so quick. You know, between the time you jump up and turn, she was still falling. I didn't get it. It wouldn't go in my head. She fell out of the chair on the floor, and I still just kind of stood there. I kind of knew what had happened, and I didn't. And I saw the blood. Oh, gosh, I, I don't remember too much. After that, I tried to do something. I called you. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, just a second, Clint. Do you know anybody who would want to kill your sister? No. You think about it. All right. Stay with him, Crockett. Sure. I don't know if I... Corner, sir. Uh, hello, Sam. Evening, Ben. Found a slug. Oh, uh, 22. Made it too flattened out to be much help. That's where it went in. Mm -hmm. Right in line with a woman. Went through the window, through her, and stuck. She must have died pretty quick. The slug ended right behind the left ear and passed through. Small slug. Well, I can't tell you much more until I get her downtown. Well, go in and take a look at her brother, will you? He's pretty shaken out. On the casing there. 22. Oh, where? About 15 feet from the house by a hedge. All right. Let's go take a look. It's a You can see that girl was sitting is right in the line. Right over here. Uh-huh. Slug was right here. It's a clear shot. Well, now all we need is the gun and the motor. Just gave me the rundown on this fellow's killing. Yeah, this is a tough one, Pete. You've checked and checked. Yeah, that's what Asher was saying. You can't find a motive. How about the brother? It's possible, I guess. But I don't think so. No lead, huh? Just a slug in the casing. If we can find the gun, we can match the casing. Well, that should be easy. Only about 50,000 22s in the city. Mm, I said it was tough. <laughs> you checked the neighborhood? Yeah, a couple of 22s, but they aren't dead. And the brother staked out for a week now. I swear he's not in. Uh, insurance? Yeah, he's got a policy, but she hasn't. All the friends and the neighbors say they were inseparable. Neither one was married. No family. Lived alone for about 15 years. What's he do? He works in a garage mechanic. Want some coffee? Yeah, yeah, I'd love some. Let's get out of this office. I'm getting a headache. Uh, 
my coffee. You hungry again? <laughs> well, I, I thought I might have a hamburger. You're always hungry. Well, stop working me so much. Hey, Jerry. Yeah, Pete. How about putting some peanut butter on a hamburger, huh? Peanut butter? Peanut butter? Well, haven't you ever had a hamburger with nuts on it? A nut burger? Sure, peanut butter does the same thing. Uh, just coffee for me, Jerry. You want onions on it, too? Sure, the work. No, oh, no. No, these are great. I'll give you a bite. Huh? Don't do me any favors. Uh, give me some coffee, too. One peanut butter burger and two coffees. There's an order. Uh, give me two nickels, huh? I don't know if I got them. Here. Jerry. I only got one. Oh, yeah, nickel. Yeah, he's here. Dan, for you. Okay, thanks. Hey, Jerry, is this jukebox out of order? The sign says, doesn't it? You sure you just didn't hang it there when you spotted Cogger coming? No, it's really out of order. <laughs> Hello, this is Gessling. Another shooting, Ben. Where? Corner of Jefferson and Adams. 4673 Adams. Another woman. I'll be right over. Keep your light on the sidewalk. 
How far did you follow this, Flint? Just to where I found the rifle. And where? A couple of yards up. Right here, I marked it. Mm. Yeah, the blood crosses the street. Yeah, come on. There's some more. Hurt pretty bad. Now, go up that way, Pete. Don't see any more. Pete? Uh, I can't find any more up this way. All right, go back. Yeah. One's here. Think he got into a car? And that's what it looks like. Blood stops about four feet from the gutter. Well, he's hurt. We know that. We'll have Sam get a sample of this blood. Still pretty fresh. He'll get the time. He'll probably look for first aid. Put out on all points. Tell the newspapers and get some radio bulletins out so the private doctors will be on the lookout. They'd have to report a gunshot wound. No, it won't necessarily look like a gunshot wound. Could tell him he was playing with a shotgun shell or, or anything. are seeking a suspect who is believed to be responsible for the slaying of two women. A week ago, Miss Ethel Bellows was shot while sitting in the living room of her home, and early this evening, another woman, Mrs. Sophie Gillette, was killed in the same manner while she sat at a bus stop on Adams Drive. The police say the suspect used an old twenty-two rifle that exploded when he fired the it's shot that killed Mrs. Gillette. Uh, turn it down, with you, Clark. Yeah, sure. The they can't possibly match those cases we found with what's left of that rifle. No, I didn't think they could. The police is too damaged. Firing pin and ejection were blown to pieces. Guthrie? My name is Leopold. Uh, wait, uh, hold it a minute, please. Hey, uh, turn that thing off. I'm sorry, uh, what were you saying? Yeah, my name is Dr. Bishop. Yes, doctor. I just heard a broadcast about a man you're looking for. Uh, yes, uh, but we don't know if it is a man. I think it is. You treat somebody? Yes. He said he'd left the gas on in his oven. It exploded in his face. I treated him some, put some very serious cuts in the face. Uh, you know him? Yes, I've had him as a patient before. Uh, what makes you think his story isn't straight? After he left and I heard the broadcast, I examined the swabs. I cleaned his wounds with. There was gunpowder on them. Doctor Bishop. Yes. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. Come in. Uh, this is Sergeant Carger. Uh, how do you do? Hello, Doctor. Let's go into the other room, gentlemen. Say you've treated this man before? Yes. His name is Devers. Peter Devers. I checked this file while I was waiting for you. Sit down. Oh, thank you. There was enough blood, so I got the smear for you. Well, that'll be a big help. You have the address on this, Peter Devers? Yes, I wrote it down. Here. 658 North Bender. Oh. How many times have you treated him in the past? Oh, four or five, according to the record. Well, you know what we want him for, Doctor. You think he's capable of shooting two women? Well, I don't know him very well. I'll show you his case history, but it won't tell much. He's a nervous person, quiet but impatient. I've taken care of a few bad colds for him, and he has something the matter with his back. I can't find much, but will work probably. Do you know what kind of work he does? Well, I asked him when he started complaining about his back, and he told me he was an accountant. Did he say where? Yes, the Enright Insurance Company on Madison. I have to have that information for my files. Well, and, uh... You have no particular opinion on whether he could have committed these crimes? I'm a doctor, Lieutenant. I'll answer that question by saying I believe any one of us can commit a serious crime under the right conditions. Yeah. 
Uh, Mrs. Short? Yes. Uh, we're police officers. Oh? We're looking for Peter Devers. Peter Devers, Mr. Devers? He's in 206. What's he done? Is he in his room now? Well, I don't know. I thought I heard him come in, but it could have been Mr. and Mrs. Pyle. They live right over me. Uh, Mr. Devers lives in the apartment next to the Piles, but I can hear him sometimes. And you think maybe he's in? Well, I thought I heard him, but I don't know. What's he done? Well, we'd just like to talk to him. Uh, he's in 206. Oh, I told you that. How long has Mr. Devers lived here? Oh, nearly six years. What kind of a person is he? Well, he's a nice person. He, he's been a very good tenant. He's quiet and doesn't go out at night much. Do you know whether he was out earlier this evening? Oh, yes. I know he went out, but I'm not sure whether or not he's come in yet. Has he got a car? Yes. Now, what in the world do you want him for? Well, we'll know better after we talk to him. Uh, show us where his car is, please. Well, certainly. The garage entrance is at the end of the hall. I'll just get something to put around me. I was just getting ready to go to bed. You better put something on warm. It's pretty cold. I'll just be a second. This guy sounds like an ideal citizen. You better go up and wait by his door. Yeah, right. All right. I got this heavy. Oh, where's the other officer? He went upstairs to wait. Oh, well, the garage is this way. Mr. Devers is really an awfully nice man. I don't know what in the world he could have done. Is he speeding? No. Uh, which one is this car? Uh, the uh, gray one. The sedan? Yes. Does Mr. Devers have a stove in his apartment? Yes. You been in all evening? Yes. Then you'd certainly hear an explosion from Mr. Devers' apartment. An explosion? Yeah, if his stove blew up. Oh, my, yes. His stove didn't blow up. I would have heard it. I think I'd better go up and see him. What's that on the seat of the car? Blood. Dr. Bishop. We're police officers, Mr. Devers. Police officers? Yeah, my name's Guthrie. This is Sergeant Cargan. Well, why did you say you were Dr. Bishop? I don't understand. Can we come in? Well, I'm not feeling very well. Yes, you had an accident, I understand. Yes, we'd like to talk to you, if you don't mind. Well, come on in. The place is a mess. I didn't even bother to clean up. I didn't feel well, so I laid down. The doctor said your stove blew up. Oh, well, it wasn't my stove. I was over at a friend's house this evening. Yes. About what time, Mr. Devers? Earlier, I guess about 8. I don't know exactly. What's this all about? You live here alone? Yes. Who's the woman in the picture? My mother. She died 10 years ago. Tell us about the accident. Well, like I told the doctor, the gas must have been on, and I struck a match. The stove exploded. I hope your friend wasn't hurt. Oh, no, no. You have to excuse me. It's... Well, I had to thank the doctor. He gave me some pills to stop the pain. You were hurt pretty badly. Oh, it's not so bad. Who was your friend? You mean where I was? Yeah. Oh, well, his name is Collins. Paul Collins. Where does he live? But what's this all about? What do you want with me? We'd just like to know where you were around 7.30 this evening. Well, I told you. You're sure you weren't on the corner of Jefferson and Adams? Jefferson and Adams? Did you know a Miss Bellows who lived no. there? No, I haven't given you the address. Well, I don't know any, Miss Bellows. How about a Mrs. Gillette? No. We found the rifle. Rifle? It matched the empty shell casings. Shell casings? You can identify shell casings as easily as bullets. We'll check with your friend, Paul Collins. Uh, wait a minute. There's no sense in going on with this. I don't know how to explain it. I shot both of them. I can't tell myself. I had the 22, and I don't know. I, I thought about turning myself in before I did it, but I couldn't. You didn't know either of these women? No, I, I'd never even seen them before. I thought about doing it a lot, 
It was like I couldn't help myself. I shot a pigeon one time when I was a kid, a pet pigeon. I used to raise him. He was just sitting there looking down at me, and I shot him. My folks never found out about it. I burned him in the incinerator. Well, it was like that. Look, I, I can't explain it to you, but I feel better now that it's over. You just had to kill these people. I couldn't help it. I I can't possibly explain how I felt. I, I just couldn't help it. Why women? I don't know. Well, you better come with us. Okay. I'll get a coat. Then this photograph of his mother. You know, she looks a little like an older edition of that first woman he killed. Miss Bella? Starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie is written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Bill Conrad as Sergeant Pete Carter with Dave Young, Harry Lang, Howard McNear, Clayton Post, Jim Nusser, Vic Perrin, Parley Bear, Virginia Gregg, and Francis X. Bushman. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. (laughs) 